Hi everyone, and welcome to Visual Thinking. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the basic elements of art. You can think of these elements as the building blocks for creating and understanding art. We are also going to look at some examples of assignments you'll be completing throughout this semester. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Jackie, a practitioner in residence in the Art and Design Department. This is my fourth year teaching at the University of New Haven. Outside the classroom, I'm a professional artist and a freelance arts writer. I received my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Boston University, and later I graduated with my master's from the Cranbrook Academy of Art. My background and educational expertise are both in painting, but I have worked with all media, and I often make installations and sculptures as part of my practice as a visual artist. My paintings are usually quite large and often on paper, like the one you see here. You can see more examples of my work and even read some of my writings on my website. Getting back to this course, Visual thinking might be one of the most important classes you will take at the University of New Haven. Everything you will learn as a professional artist or designer will be based on the concepts we will explore together in this course. This class establishes the foundation for more in-depth learning as you progress through your degree program, whether that is in graphic design, interior design, or any other major. Let's take a look at some of the projects you will create this semester. We will work with ink and explore its expressive powers. As you see in this unconventional landscape, here the student has used surprising tools to create striking marks and interesting textures. You will devise compositions that will apply your knowledge of figure ground reversal, as you see on the right, and you will also use your understanding of space and shapes to create the illusion of depth, as you see in the cut paper piece on the left. You will create a book with over a dozen illustrations of different vocabulary terms related to composition, Past students have held on to these books as they've advanced throughout their careers, referring to the concepts within them from time to time. You will also work with color. I'll show you how to mix acrylic paint and match specific hues. On the left, we are looking at a paper collage, and on the right, we are seeing a painting. Do you notice how the colors look identical between the two compositions? We will end the semester with a series of paintings that will show your ability to match colors effectively, among other skills. Returning to the content of this course, visual thinking covers two-dimensional design. This course is the introduction to vocabulary and discipline required for professionals in creative fields. Professional designers and artists must hone their visual awareness, create new studio concepts, and master specific techniques in media. The elements of art and the principles of design are the building blocks from which we create images and express these ideas. All professional designers must understand these basic building blocks. In chapter one of Launching the Imagination, we learned that the basic elements of art include point, line, shape, texture, value, and color. This lecture will begin to define these terms, but we will be reviewing these elements again and again throughout the semester. There are three essential vocabulary terms related to the first element of art, the point. A point is a basic mark, such as a dot, a pixel, or a brush stroke. A focal point is the primary point of interest within a composition. And finally, an array is a collection of points. When you have a blank page, there's not much to hold one's attention. But as soon as you add a point to the page, a conversation has begun. Because points can be so easily scaled up or down, they are often used in logo designs, as you see from this page of logos. I bet you can think of other logos that use the point as well. 
The next basic element is line. You know what a line is, but you might not be familiar with how we define this word within an art context. Lines are made from the path of a moving point made by a tool, instrument, or medium as it moves across an area. You can also think of a line as a point in motion, a series of adjacent points, a connection between two points, or an implied connection between points. A line is usually made visible because it contrasts in value with its surroundings. In this class, we'll be focusing on two-dimensional lines, though three-dimensional lines can be made using string, wire, tubes, solid rods, etc. A shape is a flat, enclosed area. Beyond this simple definition, there are many different types of shapes, from geometric to organic, curvilinear to free form. We will explore different ways you can create shapes, whether you are enclosing an area with an outer boundary or choosing another method. We will also examine the difference between positive and negative shapes. The positive shapes, to be, the positive shapes appear to be an object or a form, whereas the negative shapes seem to be the empty space surrounding these shapes. Texture is the surface quality that can be seen and felt. Textures do not always feel the way they look. For example, a drawing of a porcupine may look prickly, but if you touch the drawing, the paper is still smooth. How does this wearable sculpture by the artist Nick Cave appear to you? What words do you use to describe texture? Soft, rough, smooth, bumpy, spiky, slippery. There are thousands and thousands of words in the English language that we use to describe the way an object feels. The last element we will cover in, the, in this course is color. This is the artist color wheel, which contains 12 colors, three primary colors, three secondary colors, and six tertiary colors. In this class, we will be working with color that is light reflected off of objects. Color has three main characteristics. Hue, the name of the color, such as red, green, blue, etc. Value, how light or dark the color is. And intensity, how bright or dull a color is. Artist Linda Benglis made this poured work by pooling latex paints on the floor where they dried together in these swirling networks of vibrant hues. When it comes to the basic elements of art, there's much more to discuss, but we will conclude today's lecture here. Thanks for tuning in and see you all next time.